Scrubs check. Up next, house. A lot of you have been requesting it lately, so today we're doing a deep dive and learning about all the medicine and medical type situations that this show has to offer. I've seen a few episodes of House in the past, and I gotta tell you, the show doesn't exactly follow everyday sort of traditional medical practices, and they say it doesn't dramatize the field of medicine as much as other medical dramas. We'll be the judge of that. But before we get into it, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Jordan Wagner. I'm an ER doctor. If you enjoy the educational reaction videos and other stuff you see here on this channel, please smash that subscribe button and turn your bell notifications on. That way you learn when I post a new video. All right, let's dive right in. Oh, teacher feeling wobbly. Whoa, seizure? Typically, if somebody has a seizure, they might bite their tongue, so that's something to look out for, as well as they might pee their pants. So the other thing you always wanna do is pad the person's head. You never want to stop a seizure, maybe lay them on their side, but don't try to stop the motions. Brain tumor, she's gonna die. Brain tumor, pretty quick. It's rare to have a brain tumor in a 29-year-old. Differential diagnosis, people. If it's not a tumor, one of the suspects. Why couldn't she talk? Aneurysm, stroke, or some other ischemic syndrome. Get her a contrast MRI. Crossfield Jacob disease? They're discussing possibly differential diagnosis of why somebody would have a new onset seizure disorder. Typically epilepsy, another type of statement for seizures. People would have it at a young age, and then it's kind of weird when they get it uh, later in life. Could be tumors, could be multiple sclerosis, could be a slew of other things. Could have screwed up the blood test. I assume it's a corollary of people lie that People screw up. I always tell people blood work is not the end all be all. Blood work can be normal, it could be abnormal. A lot of times people even in this circumstance would show up with a elevated white blood cell count. But in our brains it says that there's an infection, but it could also be just a normal stress reaction of the body. It's all right, just try to relax. Oh, she's having another seizure. Having a seizure, get her, get her out. She's claustrophobic 30 seconds ago. She's not sleeping. We gotta get her out of Just the another movie. She's having an allergic reaction to gadolinium. Oh. She should be dead in two minutes. Allergic reaction to gadolinium is pretty rare, actually. Most people have allergic reaction to the contrast dye of a CT scan. At least she's at a hospital where she's having an allergic reaction where she has access to doctors. Oh, she's ashen. She's not breathing. Every point five. Come on. They're using a BVM, which is a bag valve mask, to oxygenate, and she says she can't oxygenate, which means the airway is probably swollen. In that case, you're not getting any air into the lungs, which is an emergency. What you end up doing, you can either use fiber optic, basically tools to be able to see the vocal cords to try to get a tube through. But if that can't happen, then you sometimes need to do an emergent airway where you cut open the neck and do a crike to be able to get an airway into someone's lungs. Too much so she's getting the appy. There we go. Yep, so coming. he was using a laryngoscope, which is just the, the regular blade that we use. His was a, a Mac, which is curved. He's trying to look, there's too much edema, too much swelling. So that's why he's asking for the surgical airway kit, which means it's gonna potentially cut open the neck. Somebody's cutting somebody's neck open. So he's going in a vertical incision. You're basically going below your thyroid, your cricothyroid membrane here. And so basically you cut open and then you stick your blade into the trachea and open that up and then you dilate it and it could put a specific type of tube into that area. We have different ways we could do it now as well. We can do a needle, putting a dilator, dilating it up. That's called a Seldinger technique. There you go. Get the airway in. You're hearing some noise. So this is a specific device that we'd use for somebody's neck. If you didn't even have that, the normal endotracheal tube that we would use about this long, you can use that as well. Good call. If they weren't able to get to her fast, upper airway edema, and then patient's gonna go into cardiac arrest because you're not oxygenating the tissue, and then they'd have to start CPR, try to get an airway at that point, and a lot of times people can die that way pretty fast. Pretty crazy. Done a few of those in my life, and they're very, very nerve-wracking, but it's also something heroic to save someone's life. Why are you giving Adler steroids? Because she's my patient. You don't prescribe medicine based on guesses. That's what you do with patients, you give them medicine. I'm stopping the treatment. 
sometimes you can actually treat patients clinically. What do I mean by that? Somebody comes in, these are their symptoms, this is what they're telling you, this is what your physical exam shows, this is what it is, I'm gonna give you some medicine for it. Versus his boss is saying, well, no, you need hard scientific evidence on a piece of paper to say, okay, this is what you need. Not doing experimental treatments. Five different doctors come up with five different diagnoses based on the same evidence. Why are you so afraid of making a mistake? Because I'm a doctor. Because when we make mistakes, people die. Boom. Yes. We all take an oath that says part of the Hippocratic Oath is first do no harm. So you want to make sure you know what you're doing and not harming somebody. So how are you feeling? Much better, thanks. Well, okay. Should I discontinue the treatment, boss? You got lucky. He's giving steroids to some theory that he has of his differential diagnosis, but the patient is getting better. So then the question is, is the medication working? Is it a placebo effect? But on both aspects, it's working and the patient's doing better. But does it give you the answer? Not necessarily. Given the latest symptoms, it's clearly growing deeper into the brainstem. Soon she Whoa. won't be able to walk. She'll go blind permanently. And then the respiratory center will fail. How long do we have? If it's a tumor, we're talking a month or two. If it's infectious, a few weeks. If it's vascular, that'll probably be fastest of all. You can't do all of it all at once. You can't give antibiotics. You can't give chemotherapy. You can't go in and have vascular surgery. You really got to figure out the answer. Where there's ham, there's pork. Where there's pork, there's neurosis to cirrhosis. Type one. You think she's got a worm in her brain? It fits. Ooh. Could have been living there for years. Never occurred to me. Millions because... of people eat ham every day. It's quite a leap. Actually, we see this a lot in third world countries or countries that eat a lot of pork. You actually get these calcifications in the brain. When I see it, I find it on like a CAT scan and it's a calcification where the infection had already occurred and it's loculated itself versus actually seeing it kind of first as a primary diagnosis. I think we can prove it's a worm. It's non-invasive. It's safe. I'm not completely sure, but I, yeah, I thought yeah, of it. Yeah. What's the damn idea? Have you ever seen a worm under an x-ray? A regular old, no contrast, 100-year-old technology x-ray. They light up like shotgun oh. pellets. Interesting. Worms are creepy. I've seen worms in people's stools. I've never seen them in like tissue. Just like on a contrast MRI. Which is the same thing as a CT scan, which we did, which proved nothing. Worm cyst is the same density as the cerebrospinal fluid. We're not gonna see anything in her head. But Chase is right. He's right, we should x-ray her, but we don't x-ray her brain, we x-ray her leg. Worms love thigh muscle. She's got one in her head, I guarantee you, there's one in her leg. It can happen. You can get them anywhere in your body, different type of organs, not cool, it's gross. And there's even one where like you can get into your foot and it can like poke its head out, but it's like burrowing and the only way to get it out is like to twist it on a stick, like crazy. But you can get them in your brain. Whoa. Cool depiction. This here is a worm lava. So if it's in my leg, it's in my brain? Could be. Are you looking for a guarantee? Now we get you better. Albendazole. Albendazole, same class as mabendazole. Very similar to any of the antiparasitic medications that we have. And it's pretty easy oral medications and then it should eradicate it. We'll probably make you keep taking the pills even if you get every one of those. There she goes. Crazy. They go on this like whirlwind of like differential diagnoses of why this 29 year old person is now having seizure disorders, trying to figure out. It's crazy. And a lot of times people still may show up not having epilepsy or a primary diagnosis of a seizure disorder. Seizure might just be a symptom. And then they gotta to continue to figure this out. Sometimes you get admitted to the hospital and sometimes it's an outpatient workup with a neurologist. I love Dr. House. When I've seen this show before, he's nuts when it comes to just throwing different medications. It's like uh, throwing a bunch of spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. It kind of makes a little bit of sense, but you do need data to basically back up what you're doing. So this is awesome. Let me know if you guys have any other scenes or episodes uh, that I should check out from House.
Do you have a favorite TV show or movie that features medical situations that you want me to break down further and explain? Let me know which show or episodes in the comments below that I should check out for another video. As always, make sure you subscribe if you wanna see more fun videos like this one and check out my doctor reaction series right here to catch up on all the educational reviews of your favorite TV shows that I've done. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.